Good evening, dear friends. Well, we met again on our YouTube receivers, and our long-awaited topic continues. We stopped at which muscles become short during our life, and what to do with them. We have sorted out the upper part of the body. For those who have not yet had time to watch, watch this video, do not watch yet, go back. Watch the previous ones carefully and only then return. Let's meet again first in the past and then in the present. And so what awaits us below the belt here? Several muscles that become short because we spend a long time sitting and use them little, such an imbalance develops. This is the iliolumbar muscle at the back, the surface of the thigh, the calf muscle with the comb muscle, and the plantar aponeurosis. Here we can add muscles and fascia to the tendons on the foot itself, and at the same time, several muscles weaken. This is the lower part of the abdomen that you see on the screen. And this, 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 falls out so nicely. Such a cute belly is formed, cheerful, the gluteal muscles sag too weak. It's a bit crumbly, and the lumbar muscles, the back extensor, also get weak loads in everyday life. So friends, before we return to the study of our most interesting topic, I have one very pleasant news for you. Finally all. Previously unavailable I for residents of our country, they become available again. From this moment and you all the exercises that are in the closed part of YouTube where full recovery of the spine and joints, how to train each muscle, how not to train, stretch, restore and eliminate vibration, how to massage it, how not to massage, how to restore the movement of the vertebrae. All this finally becomes available to you again. And the most interesting thing is that everything is step by step. There will be exercises available for you. You get, for example, one lesson, one task, you do it. And after that, you get the next one. That is, it will be a step by step recovery. Not all exercises at once. Not clear what to do, whether this or that, how to be, but exactly how it should be. First the foot, then the knee. Depending on that, there will be several options. There will be separate different directions. For example, a course of restoring the correct gait. That is, there will be all exercises, step-by-step -step recovery too, starting from the simplest and ending with more complex ones. How to restore coordination of movements. How to use various muscles. Quite large when we are born at least how to make movements and how to load one muscles on others during a step, how to use a step to restore the most mobility of the spine, joints, how each muscle should work there, also separate exercises for each muscle that we most often work incorrectly, how to stretch, how to train, how to massage, all this is available to you again. You can rejoice, have fun, Tell all your friends how happy and happy you are, and all this by the link in the description. Go and see, check. There will also be live broadcasts. I will be answering your questions, which will also be an opportunity for you to ask there, which I will read and answer. But until we meet, see you by the link in the description. See how the abdomen is arranged. Our straight abdominal muscle. It can be uneven, it can tense and relax unevenly. And at the same time, the upper part of the abdomen, this upper part of the straight abdominal muscle, it tends to shorten in us. And the lower part of the abdomen, it tends to relax. Honestly, the lower part of the abdomen begins to protrude a little forward, and there is a desire to pump up the lower part from here. They even divide the exercise into the lower part of the abdomen the upper part, the lower press, the upper one, but not everything is so simple. In order to tighten this part, this part of the abdomen, we need to first increase the distance here with you, because when the chest cage, as if it drops down here, the intra-abdominal pressure becomes a little more in the lower part of the abdomen. And even if we will swing train the lower part of the abdomen, we simply have this muscle it will become thicker with you. And the abdomen visually can even become thicker, more, 
Therefore, it is important to relax this upper part of the abdomen first and this part of the back, the extensor of the back and the thoracic spine to make it stronger and the vertebrae themselves to make more mobile. Because very often it happens that when the abdomen is shortened, stoop occurs and the short straight muscle of the abdomen in the upper part does not allow us to straighten, interferes with the work of the back muscles, and over time these vertebrae become less mobile than they should be when the lower part of the abdomen relaxes. The tension of the square muscle of the lower back automatically arises. The square muscle of the lower back should relax well at the moment of turns when we turn with you. If it does not stretch well enough, then this turn in life that occurs when we reach out somewhere with our hands, it begins to be compensated by the fact that the excess begins to turn the tass. Who lacks movements? Even the leg begins to turn inward. It often happens that Primarily from the right work side, the knee is more inward due to insufficient chest mobility and lack of R79 chest threads. Mobility of these ribs, they move poorly forward precisely because of the shortening of the square muscle of the lower back. It does not allow these ribs to shift forward. In a complex, such a disgrace occurs that needs to be eliminated on the iliolumbar muscle when it begins to shorten. The most interesting thing is rarely very happens that it is shortened evenly on the right and on the left. Most often it happens that from the working side, also on the right it is stronger, and on the left it is weaker, and therefore there are various bends in different directions, depending on which side it is weaker, which is stronger, and this muscle has a great value in stabilizing the sacroiliac steel, this joint. Often pains occur in the area of this steel with on the outside it is stabilized by the large gluteal muscle. From the inside it is stabilized by the iliolumbar muscle. It has two parts. One starts from the lumbar and a thoracic vertebrae from 12 and the second part is from here from the iliac bone. Together they unite and attach to the femur from the inside. They hold this when it is weak. The gluteal muscles first cope with this, then also get tired, stop working, and all the load is already shifted to weaker muscles. To the pear-shaped muscles, you are here, which are the pear-shaped muscles. And after this, various symptoms may occur. The sciatic nerve syndrome may occur, or other bad things too. We need to keep this muscle in good condition. In addition to that, it should be elastic. It should not. It should stretch well, because during a step, if this is what we have in good condition, it allows the leg that will be behind us. This muscle stretched. See, it allows the hip joints to move. And from this position, the leg will then go well forward. Here at this moment, the spine and it maintains its normal position if the length of this muscle will not be enough. Then when the leg moves back, it will move with us along with the pelvis, along with the pelvis, to make movements. And here, there will be excessive, excessive extension, excessive tension. Again, the square muscles of the lower back, this is it, and this will form. Such an incorrect position of the pelvis, that is, the pelvis will tilt forward even when we will stand straight with you. Such a tilt of the pelvis will turn out forward and this will further complicate our work of the rectus abdominis muscle, even more will start to fall out. This lower part of the abdomen forward. The back surface of the thigh is also very connected with the work of the gluteal muscle and because these muscles start from the ischial tuberosity on which we sit with you. And here several muscles we have. This is the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus muscle. They also participate in inclinations. That is, when we lean with you, not only the back extensor works, but a very large load on the buttock, a large load. On the muscles of the back surface of the thigh, therefore, they should also be in good condition for us. How to eliminate violations. Remove the shortening of these muscles. Adhesions. 
fibrosis, which often arises there because these muscles can often be overloaded, like the calf muscle, we will just sort it out with you now. Well, friends, we are slowly getting up and we start the exercise so that to stretch this upper part of the abdomen with you, we take a roller, not necessarily the same specially made Schumerlinski roller in the medical college. You can use any other non-certified roller, for example. Roll it out of a towel, a blanket, any handy materials, any will do. Let's put it under, you under the lower edge of the shoulder blades, here. A little higher, a little lower. It's not so important. We take it and carefully lie down on it together. We lay down like this. And here, if you feel that the upper part of the abdomen is stretching a bit, it means you are in the right direction. You can move your hands back here. Put your elbows on the floor so they touch the floor. If they don't touch, try to use a smaller roller or lower your hands a bit. You can also put your hands behind your head. And in this position, think about the beautiful. Remember, something good or just lie down or if you have a TV on the ceiling, watch a couple of episodes, no parsing, you need to lie like this. Start gradually from two minutes up to five minutes. That is, in this position, it is not so important to bend and unbend your back to the other side as to stretch this upper part of the shoulder in preparation from the knee after Morocco in. Also at the same time, what we did in the last video with you, massage the part of the rectus abdominis muscle that attaches to the ribs with a ball you can work it out in the same way at this moment so that it relaxes faster on the ribs and along the lower edge of the ribs as well. Here you can press a little and hold it. You don't need to press hard so as not to hurt yourself there. Work on the muscle itself. Relax it. In this position, your diaphragm function also improves. You will breathe easier after this. And in this position, we lie for two minutes. Two minutes have passed. After that, after that, you put your hands behind your head and start to rise up, lifting your head. You don't really help yourself with your hands. You just put your hands on the back of your head. And in this position, you have lifted your head. The most important thing here is to look up again, not down. Lifted and lowered, raised it again, lowered it. If it's hard to keep your hands behind, you can hold them. Hold it down here, touch your muscle. At this moment, it will tense and relax. And you need to do such movements. Do about 10 of these movements, rise up, go down. Simultaneously, your neck muscles will also be strengthened. Did two, three sets of 10 times. And again, lie down for about 30 seconds. And in this position, let your muscles stretch even more. So, after doing this exercise with the roller, we approach the wall. Here we have slightly stretched this part of the abdomen, the upper part of the abdomen, our shortened one. And we approach the wall closely. We put one leg also closer to the wall, and we start to put the back leg on the toe. Shoulder blades are linked at the back, and your task is to reach the wall with this part of the stomach, the upper part. There, you've reached it. In this position, your spine will bend and your back muscles will tense. And your task is to reach the wall with this spot. You arrived, paused briefly, then repeated. You've reached it by bending your back and back. We do it 10 times on one side, one leg forward, then the other 10 times. After this, after you've done this exercise near the wall, try doing the same thing in motion. Here you are taking a step, and at the moment when your foot is on its toes, this place also seems to approach the wall at once. You made such a movement, then the foot stepped forward. Again, they stretched out in the back, as if you're reaching forward with the upper part of your abdomen. You made this movement, then you stepped. First you made this movement, then you stepped. At the same time, your foot is getting on its toes. That is, you did it once and then back. In this way, you will train your spine to work with every step. This muscle will be stretching for you. 
the back muscles that usually don't work for you will be activated. Okay, next we have the iliolumbar muscle. Also, the one that is constantly in a shortened state when we sit for a long time. It is located right here, inside, and it goes to the leg from all the lumbar vertebrae. It even attaches to the intervertebral discs, to the bodies of the vertebrae. It plays a significant role in the formation of an intervertebral hernia. When there is a difference between the right and left muscle, it also impacts the sacroiliac joint's function. It stabilizes it from the inside. Therefore, it's very important for this muscle to be both strong and flexible. So, we get into a similar position as in the previous exercise. But now we make the distance between the legs a bit larger. And right here, we start reaching forward with the knee. Keep your back straight and try to create tension right here in the front part of the hip joint. You will feel a bit of tension there. And we reach forward with the knee. We try to reach the wall with our knee. The position of the back leg is very important here. Your toe should be pointing forward. Don't turn it like this. And at the same time, your pelvis should also move forward. If the tension is too strong, you can't straighten your leg. Then start with a lighter version. Here you get into a position where the distance between your legs is smaller, and you start to push your pelvis forward. In the previous exercise, we were stretching forward with the upper part of the abdomen so that our back was arching. And here, you have these two little bones on your pelvis. It's called the anterior superior iliac spine. And if we stretch the left iliac bone, the iliac lumbar muscle, then you stretch more with this left little bone. Try to reach the wall with it. If you feel the tension, start with this exercise. If you don't feel the tension, then increase the distance between your legs and reach with your knee. Also do 10 movements to one side. Switch legs. Do 10 movements to the other side. You're already extending the other knee. This stretch may feel different on the right and left because these muscles are often of different lengths. And now the back of the thigh, the calf, and the popliteal muscles. Before stretching them, you need to get them in order. Eliminate adhesions between the muscles themselves and work on the fascia. For this, use a ball and rollers. You can do it on a chair. You sit down, take the ball, and put it under the back surface of your thigh. You start practically near the knee. You've found a painful spot, and simply if the weight of the leg is enough to already feel, well, such painful sensations, just hold the leg in this position so that it presses a little on the ball. And so in the middle of the thigh, between the biceps femoris and the semi-tendinosus, semi-membranosus muscle, walk along this groove. Look for painful points. If things aren't so bad with these muscles, there won't be much pain. You can help yourself by pressing down with your hands. And like this, go over the entire muscle. You can press on each point for a minute, even two, just like this. Work it out. Go over the entire muscle. Then a little bit to the left. You've just gone over the middle of the thigh here. Then a little to the left. You also place the ball. You go straight to the buttock as far as you can. And you went along the inner part of this muscle <laughs> on both sides. Then you take this ball, put it back between your muscles and start to straighten your leg. Straighten the leg and bent it back. Straightened and bent. You'll have both simultaneously. Muscle development and fascia stretching. And in this position, do 5-10 movements in each position. So, go through the entire muscle like this. And you do the same thing in the middle. If the leg does not fully straighten, if you feel a strong stretch, do not do it at full amplitude. Gradually, it will straighten out for you. If you pull your toe towards yourself, you will feel even more tension. So here we are stretching the back surface for now, so don't pull your toe towards yourself so that the short calf muscle doesn't interfere with this movement. Do the same in the middle, on the inner and outer surface of the thigh. Do this movement. It may happen that you can fully straighten your leg on one side, but it may not fully straighten on the other side. That's also not a problem. Keep practicing gradually, you will get there. And thirdly, you do this in motion, massaging these muscles. That is, you make a slight movement inward, outward, inward, outward, working through all these muscles as well. 
There may be areas of muscle densification where there may not be much pain, but you will feel that the muscle is more tense, more dense, there you also linger longer. It may be that the first time you massage, it will all be painless. But the next day, when you touch it, everything will hurt. This is because the adhesions, fibrosis, that was between the muscles, you are tearing, stretching. You can also use rollers like these for massage. Their impact will be less painful. The same thing, that is, you can work out all these muscles in motion like this across the muscle fibers. There are different rollers for the back of the thigh. You can use these big ones. You can use a little smaller in diameter. They will even be more suitable. The last muscle is the calf muscle, and along with it, the combined muscle, the muscle of the back of the shin. You take a roller, put it down, lie down more comfortably, and in this position, you put your leg on it. If it's already quite painful, you can just also hold your leg in this position so that this pain subsides. The muscle gradually relaxes and then a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. That is, you work through the entire muscle right up to the knee, to the knee joint. If you don't feel much pain, you can increase the pressure by placing your second leg and here you can add movement. That is, you start to shift your leg a little to one side, to the other side, press on the roller, and you will find there more or less painful areas. Where it hurts more, there you linger longer. And this is how you work through the entire leg. Maybe you've seen there are such ways where you work through the leg in this way. They are not very effective. Here you need to work more across the fibers, and the pressure should be quite high. And it's similar to how we did the back surface of the thigh, where we straightened the leg with you, a similar movement. Here you put your leg, Put the other leg on top, and in this position, you start pulling your foot towards you and back. You pull towards yourself, and then you make a movement back. That is, you press and at the same time move your foot. You pressed and make a movement, and do the same thing higher up and all over the muscle, just like that. Walk through. If you have larger balls, they are also very suitable for working out the calf muscle. You put your foot on this ball and make a similar movement. You put your foot down, press down from above, and make exactly the same movements as we did on the roller. Up, down, pull close, pull back. That's how you'll work through the entire muscle. There you go. And in this way, all the main muscles that need to be constantly stretched, you will keep in such a good tone. They will be elastic, they won't shorten, you will run, jump, have fun, like, and write comments.